everybody, welcome to Paper Wishes Vlog. I'm Lene Gehrig, and today I have this wonderful collection. It's from Crafter's Companion, and it's called Nature's Garden Lily Collection. And it includes all of these wonderful things. Um, this one is the Calla Lily Stem and Stamp and Die. So that makes beautiful calla lilies. Beautiful lilies, stamp and die. Oh, and this gorgeous ornate frame and corner die and also a decadent lilies embossing folder. Sheets, of, there's nine sheets of flower forming foam and there's three colors, white, green, and pink. And then this beautiful collection of paper and vellum. In fact, I didn't read the pack, what it included when I was first looking through it. And I got through here and I was like, oh my gosh, there's vellum in here too, which is a new thing for Crafter's Companion. Look at all these gorgeous, very Monet looking um, papers, so beautiful. And then in the back, there are sheets of this gorgeous vellum. Oops, <laughs> there we go, just gorgeous. And of course the vellums coordinate with the papers. All right, so let's get to some cards. Oh, I did take out some of the sheets here of foam. So you could see those outside the package. And nine sheets may not sound like very much, but you could make a ton of flowers with, with uh, the nine sheets and they're nine by 12. All right, so let's get in and play some cards. Um, we're gonna start with, okay, so this is the embossing folder, this gorgeous embossing folder, here, decadent lilies. Um, as you can see here, I used some of the lily patterned paper just as a background, just to give it a little bit of color. And then I just embossed white cardstock, and then I used my tried and true tri blend markers, alcohol pens from Spectrum Noir. And the coloring I did was really simple. So I'm just going to pick out one of these lilies. I have this upside down. Let's see, I'm gonna pick out one of these to color for you. I think I'll do the top one. Okay, so the first thing I did was take this yellow, this one is light yellow blend, and I started off with the darker shade. And for those of you that are not familiar with a tri-blend, there's a dark shade, a mid-middle shade, and a light shade. I have lotion on my hands, so it's gonna be tricky. There we go, in the light shade, all in one. So one color scheme all together, which is just brilliant. So we're gonna do the little tips of each one of these lily centers here. And then I'm just gonna go to the mid range and, oops, I missed one there. And just do those stems. And then also take the mid range and do the tips of each one of these petals. that and then I used a coral this one is coral blend and went to the mid range and just did a little bit of the darker coral right on the center vein of each one of these lilies and then I went to the light range light blend rather and just blend that mid range right in with the light. Just go right in over that mid. And then just staying right on that one petal. It's raised, it's the embossed one. And then I'm also taking this light and going in between the areas that are among those stamen. So those get some color as well. There we go. All right, so you get the idea. And then we're gonna do a leaf. So this is my favorite shade of green, dull uh, green blend. And what I like to do with this one is I'm gonna start off with the lightest shade. Do this very large petal here. It goes all the way up like this, just in case that doesn't show up on camera so well. Just gonna outline that so we can see it. Coloring that all in. All right, and then I want to take some of the mid-range 
and darken it up at the base right there. And I also want to darken it on the underside of the leaf. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to my light blend and I'm just starting off by blending right into that mid and then I'm just bringing that color all the way up to the middle of the leaf. Same with the underside. And the underside of the leaf I want that to stay sort of darker so I'm not going to blend that too much. Okay? You can see that variation in color there. And then for the background um, I just took some uh, sort of a lime green. This is the yellow and green Cat IQ ink pad. Highly pigmented color which we love. And I just took that and I just used a blender brush, which actually I forgot to grab. Um, and I just used that on the background, um, which has this little nice little di diamond pattern. Okay, so let's move on to another project. All right, here we've got some lilies. And this one uses. Uh, this one is the Beautiful Lilies Stamp and Die. And this one I used in two different ways. This is using cardstock, but I also used it on the foam, so I'll show you that as well. Um, and for this, I just made a Z fold card. So we started off just like this with the card, folded the front flap over, creased that really well on the back. And then I used the new oval cutting die set with the 12 ovals and scallop ovals from Hot Off the Press, just to make my background and um, glued that just to the left side of the flap. But before that, of course, I covered it with the yellow. Um, let me grab the paper pad here. I don't know if I made this clear when we were looking at it before, but on the back side of each one of these sheets, here we go. So here's the lily paper that I used here. And then on the inside of the card, I used the back of the sheet. Okay, so I wasn't sure if I had shown you that. All right, so to make these lilies, let me grab my stamp and die. Here we go. So this stamp and die is really versatile because it has two different kinds of leaves. The leaves you can also use for um, lily petals as well. And then it's also got two petals and they each come in various different sizes. So you can make little teeny tiny lilies and large lilies. This would be the largest size right here and this is the medium size. So let me show you how these are made. As I said, I just did these out of white cardstock. So I went ahead and stamped them. And then, now you could color them when they're on this sheet. Um, but if you'll notice on my lilies, they're sort of darker around the outside and lighter on the inside. And so when I'm putting, I like to put them close together like this so I'm not using up a lot of cardstock. And I find that using my blender brush or whatever kind of applicator, um, it I just, kind of, I don't know, I lose control as much and I feel like I overlap onto other ones. Sure, I could spread them out more, but then I'm wasting paper or I'm wasting foam. So I prefer to go ahead and ink them using um, after they're die cut. So that's just a preference. So, um, and then what I did is take off a little die and I just like to tape it down with a piece of stencil tape, washi tape, whatever, and run that through the die cutting machine. So then you're going to get a petal that looks like this. Okay, and I also did some leaves as well. So there's my leaf. Put this back so I don't lose it. All right, and then I used the darker, it's kind of a mustard shade or an ochre shade of yellow and just went around the outside edge of each petal. Just like that. Okay, and then the green actually didn't, I just cut this out of a pastel green cardstock. I actually didn't ink those at all. And then I used this ball tool this is also by crafters companion these are actually meant for flower forming so it comes with the foam and it comes with three of these ball tools and that gives you six different ends so i just have one that has the smallest end and then sort of a medium size turn this over your petal over and i'm just going back and forth to get a nice curve on that okay oh 
and then the same with the small leaf. Oh, actually, I grabbed the wrong size leaf. Here we go. This is the larger size leaf. All right, so I'm curving those, both of those. And here I've already started, and I'm going to go ahead and use some of my specialist acrylic glue, Cosmic Shimmer. Put a little bit of dot of glue, and then I'm just gluing those from the back. Okay, there's evenly spaced, sort of in a star shape. Okay, and then I've got my larger petals here, rather my leaves. And those are just going to be glued in the same way between each one of the petals. Okay. So you get the idea. We're just going to glue those all the way around. And this makes the largest size. I've already finished one here. This is the medium size. And then for these little stamen, these are just the little pastel stamen. You can get these at Paper Wishes, and they're very handy. We use these a lot for flowers. And then when I'm gluing these on, I like to use hot glue because it just sort of takes immediately, and you don't have to wait for the glue to dry when they're standing up. So as you can see, I cut that with about a half inch long stem. A little dot of glue, and then just Put it right there and sort of stand it up for just a second and let it dry. Okay, so you can get them all standing. It's great, a great dimension there. Okay, let's move on to the foam flowers. Go. All right, so here, another, this is the same flower, the same size petal that we just made. I just used uh, this stamp set. So before I used this stamp, for the foam I used this stamp. So they're the same size, they both use the same die cutting tool. And um, I created my um, window, or rather my square window frame, um, using the 12 square and scallop um, die cutting tools from Hot Off the Press. They're just a great basic tool to have. And then I just glued some of the vellum behind that. So it has a cute little window. I also cut the card. So you cut the card from the smaller square and then go ahead and cut the larger frame from pink, pastel pink cardstock and glue that over the top with the vellum in between. It was just a really simple thing to do. So let me show you how I did with the foam. So I started off with the pink foam right here. And I also, because you're using foam, I like to use a permanent ink on them because stamping or inking on plastic essentially will come off on your hands. So I like to use Stazon ink pads. So I went ahead and stamped this particular image on my pink foam. And I'm going to color it. So this was fuchsia pink, and I'm going to color it with the mustard yellow. And I like to use my little daubers to do this. And one thing about this mustard yellow, I noticed that once I got it on the foam, that it had a re it had sort of a very um, orangey color to it. Really orangey on the pad here too. So let's see what this looks like on just cardstock. Oh, isn't that interesting? It's very orange. It's very yellow on the cardstock, but I think when you put it on the pink, it just went sort of orangey, which was fine. There's orange and lilies. Um, so what I did was I just started, and for this particular um, style of inking, I'm just gonna ink it right on the sheet here. And because I'm just going right up the center of each one of these lilies. Like that. And then I can just keep this color in my little box, which I love, and it's all ready to go for next time. And that ink will dry on there, but then when I use my ink pad, it just activates it again. So I don't have to keep getting new inking tools, which I find to be very nice. All right, so then I'm going to place the die right there, and you can do the two sizes at the same time, small and the medium. Okay, and then what you're going to get 
is just a lot, here we go, of little petals, little foam petals. I gotta make some space here. And I also did my leaves just out of that same pastel green cardstock, but when I inked my leaf, I used this one, which is more of a block leaf, and I inked that with this sort of mid medium to dark, sort of a mossy green, so that it just really showed up those veins. I really like that leaf. All right, so let's take a peek on how we are going to heat these. This is my um, tool set from Elizabeth Craft Designs, and it's got great little tools in it. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use my tweezers because when we're using that heat tool, we don't wanna get burned. All right, so I'm gonna show you that these will shrink up quite a bit. I'm gonna do two at a time. I've never tried two at a time before. Let's just see what it does. Okay. Turn my heat gun on high. Oops, I need to get my craft mat. These craft mats are heat resistant. So I'm not gonna burn my tabletop. And you're gonna notice they're gonna start shrinking. And when they shrink, they become more dense. And then they become very pliable. Where before, there we go. Before they shrink, it's very thin and it would tear very easily. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to just sort of stretch them a little bit and I want to curve them so that they go like that. And there's no really big hurry. Like you don't have to do these when they're still hot. Um, I just usually do all that, you know, five of them to make one flower at a time. And I'm, they're still pliable and they're still very moldable at that point. Oh, now here's the thing. Here's probably why I should not have done two at once because this one, this one is smaller than this one. All right, so that's what happened. All right, that's what you get for rushing. Okay. Let's do one more, just so we get the general idea of the shape when we start putting them together. Now I also like to use hot glue when I'm using the foam. Just dries more quickly. All right, so what we're going to do, just put a little dot of hot glue on each one of these. This is low temperature glue, so I mean, if I get some on my hands, I'm not hurting myself. All right, so you want to sort of evenly space these in that star shape. Okay. And then that's when we also, once we get all of the five on here, that's when we're going to start gluing those leaves in between as well. Go bring these in. You can see better. And I just like to glue a leaf between each one. Oh, I should have mentioned too, for the leaves, I do like to, because they're cardstock, I do like to use my tool there. All right, so as you can see, there's half of our flower. Okay. 
Now for the little stamen, I wanted to continue my little orange theme. Cut that to about quarter to a half inch long. Put a little bit of glue on there. And just stick those right in center. There we go. And then as you can see, I also used from, there we go, from this set, from the ornate frame and corner, I did use one of the corners cut out of the same green as the leaves and put that there. And then added a greeting, and that is from the More Greeting Dazzles. Those are new from Hot Off the Press. And also some sparklets, just to add a little sparkle. All right, next card. Because you're getting a lot of techniques today. All right, so this is a beautiful card that Debbie made. And it uses that ornate frame. And it also uses the Calla Lily stamp and die. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? She also did the Z fold. She started off with a card that looks to be about six by six. She made out of white cardstock and then folded the front over and then lined the back with pattern paper. And the back is this beautiful white lily paper Hers is the printed back side of that. So let's start, oh, and I should also mention there's vellum in, nested in that frame. Isn't that gorgeous? All right, so let's start with, um, I think we're gonna start with making the um, calla lily and then I'll show you something about the frame. So for the calla lily, first thing is that Debbie stamped, used this stamp set, okay, and she used this one right here and she stamped her petals out of this paper. So it's got that beautiful Monet looking background, okay? So the back is pink. And then she brought up this very good point. So she first stamped them, but then she also needed to stamp them on the back, okay? Because her lilies are curving. So she stamped them and then she die cut them just the traditional way. But then when she got to this back side, um, she just found that it was easier to put her um, stamp on an acrylic block or surface and then ink that with the black ink and then just take her die cut piece and just put that right over the top and then just press that down and then it aligned everything perfectly rather than trying to do it this way. So that was a little tip from Debbie. All right, and then she also used the lily, um, the base, this is the calla lily stem right here. And she took some, she die cut that from the green paper. And then she also used some lemon sherbet luster polish. And she used that just on that stamen on the stem. So it has a really nice glossy yellow. And then Take the tool. He likes the Elizabeth Craft ball tool. It's a little smaller than the Crafter Companion tool. And we want to have this so it's this is the top of the lily or the curved part of the lily. And you just do this so you're going all the way around it, getting that really loosened up. And then we're going to concentrate going right down the center to try to get that kind of a rounded. So when you're doing this, it sort of just breaks down that card stock and makes it really pliable. We're gonna just use a little dot of low temperature glue. Put that right there. Now we're going to, you could always use your little tweezer tools if you don't like it using your hands. But as I said, this is low temperature glue. I don't mind that at all. And we're just pinching that base so that our sides are gonna be curling. And then you just sort of help those sides along. You wanna keep that stamen centered. There we go. 
And then once I get that curled, I'm going to put a little bit more glue. I didn't get enough in there to pinch that bottom. There we go. Just going to, oops, there we go. We're going to hold that in place and let that dry for a moment. Okay, so then she just made several in all the different sizes. How great is that? Made a little cluster, made her little bow. But let's also talk about this frame piece right here. And um, Debbie just cut hers out of white cardstock. And then, this as I said, this was Lemon Sherbet Luster Polish. We're going to do a little bit of painting. Oops. There we go. Inside came out of the lid. All right, so we just want to scoop that, and then as we're getting it, that paint on, just just rubbing it against the edge of the pot, and then just this nice little pouncing motion. You can see what a rich, beautiful yellow that is. And Debbie put two coats of this on. So once you get the first part covered. You want to wait just a minute or two for it to dry and then go back and do the same thing again. Um, it's just really a nice opaque color so the coverage on it is great. Okay, so that's just pretty much you know one good coat. And just let that dry and then she went around and she backed just this inside edge right there, that second oval with the pink vellum. Beautiful. All right, let me put these all together here. So as you can see, this collection, it really makes some really, really beautiful cards. We have a great money saver on this, so I would really encourage you to check that out. And if you're watching us um, on our vlog page, the money saver is directly below this video and it's underlined and you click on that, it'll take you to the money saver page. And if you're watching us on YouTube, just check out the link in the description below. There's a link to the Money Saver as well as a link to paperwishes.com where you can watch lots of videos and learn lots of techniques and there's all kinds of goodies for you to buy. So thanks for joining me today and I'll see you next time.